Hi guys, you're welcome to the third model, which is networking. What about we'll be talking about the async tax and uh, the open weather uh, utilities? Uh, we'll be moving straight to Android Studio, where I have the source file. We are still continuing from where we stopped. We actually uh, stopped at uh, the creating of a dummy uh, data. This time around, we won't be using the dummy data. We'll be speaking to the open weather URL uh, using the async tax. Right there, my Java classes. Uh, in the main activity, uh, we're going to delete the dummy weather data. You know, uh, you will be getting the read data from the internet in this particular lesson. So you're going to delete the for loop as well. You know, uh, all, I, I have all that deleted, but if you still have them, just try to delete it. And the text view with the dummy data. So this time we're going to call the load weather data method uh, to perform the network request to get the weather. Once all of our views are set up, we can load the weather data. You know, this particular method is very important. You just call it up right on the onCreate method. Uh, let's see what this method is going to do. You're going to create a method that will get the user's preferred location and execute your new async tax and call it uh, from this, you know. This method will get the user's preferred location for weather and then tell some background method to get the weather data in the background. So this is the load weather method. Uh, Data method. What is doing? You have the location string, uh, the weather preferences, uh, and uh, we have the weather preferences right uh, in the data uh, sub package. Uh, you get the preferred weather location, and you fetch the weather tax. So we're going to execute this based on the location as its parameter. So what's the weather tax method going to do? You're going to create a class. This is a class now, not a method that extends the async tax to perform the network request. So the, word, the fetch weather tax extends async tax. We have the string, uh, this is a generic, uh, the void, and also the string array. Now you're gonna override the doing background method to perform your network request. So this doing background method, so if there's no zip code, there's nothing to look up for. So it's going to check the parameter length, it was zero, it's gonna return null. Now we have the string location, set it to param zero index. Uh, we have the weather request URL. You know, we have this right uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the utilities. What about, what about we have the network utils? You build the URL based on the location. We have a try and catch method where well, we're going to have the JSON uh, weather re response uh, instantiated with the network utilities. And now you're going to get a response from the HTTP URL based on the weather request URL. Uh, we have the string array here. That's for the single string, and this is for the array. Uh, this simple JSON weather data. Uh, we have the open weather JSON utilities. You get a simple weather string from JSON, passing it to you from the main activity down to the JSON weather response. That's what this is doing. And you return the JSON, uh, the simple JSON weather data. From uh, all this is actually happening from the open weather JSON utilities. We have them. I've actually explained it, uh, that earlier, but we're still going to look at that. Uh, so now what you're going to catch, there's an exception. So you're going to print that to stack trace and return now. Uh, we have the on post execute. Uh, you're going to override the on post execute method to display the result of the network request. Uh, so this is actually going to handle the display instead of just appending a dummy data we did in the earlier lesson. Uh, this we're going to act, uh, have a, an if statement. If the weather data is not equal to null, it's going to iterate through the array and spend the append the strings to the text view. You know, the reason why we're going to have the uh, the new lines, you know, we have three new lines after the string is to give uh, visual separation between each string in the text view. You know, later we're going to learn about a better way to display the list of data. So we have a for each loop. This is a for each for each loop. Uh, so for each for each string weather string, uh, based on the weather data, uh, the, we're going to call the M weather text view, which is actually holding, sitting right in the activity forecast XML. Uh, we're going to append each weather string to it, and a new line three times. You know, I've explained that. And in our previous, uh, in our next or subsequent classes or subsequent tutorial, we're going to display the data better. So this is just uh, the the async way or the async text being. Um, being used on display here to actually fetch data from the URL. So let's get to look at the open weather JSON utilities. This is actually uh, this is this is actually passing the JSON 
from the web response and returns an array of strings. That's what this is actually doing. But by the string, the, the latest temperature, maximum, minimum, weather, description, and uh, the message code. Uh, so we have the JSON object, uh, forecast JSON being created. Uh, so this is actually checking if there's an error uh, on this. And uh, we have the weather arrays also being created. So the past weather data uh, is going to be instantiated and the weather array is going to be checked with the length. So we have the local date, UTC date, the start date. So a for loop is being run here well, to, to, to iterate through the weather array uh, whereby we get the length. So that's uh, where we get the JSON object representing the day that the day forecast to get the JSON object. Uh, we also have for the weather object, you know, uh, which is actually the element long. I've actually explained this particular uh, code. So that's just how are you going to add your networking. This is just the simple networking. We're still going to be talking about networking in the advanced way in this particular tutorial, in this particular uh, application. So I will implore you to still to sit tight and uh, to sit tight and move on to the next lesson, which is actually going to be talking about the menus. Let's get to see how we're going to integrate menus into this application. Stay tuned.